in the background here on this front TV. Now, I've, I've got two monitors set up. Uh, what we're doing today is I'm actually going to show you how I did uh, 3D projection onto the, the full house this year. Um, I touched on the projector this morning. Uh, we've got two projectors here. One's, a, one's a probably a standard throw, um, equivalent to a home theatre uh, projection, whereas if you had a 100-inch screen, which would be a bit bigger than that, you'd sit at about four and a half metres back from the screen to project that, that whole image. Uh, this one here is a uh, short throw projector. So basically, same size image, closer. Uh, you can see there it's about a quarter of the distance ahead of the other projector to get the rough size of, of the screen. Um, when you're multiplying that across a house, um, it's the difference between the projector being in your yard, or in my yard, and across the road. Um, so I, I tried it. I've got a home theatre Epson projector at home that's just a home theatre one. Um, when I first wanted to look at projecting, walked out the front, dirty big extension lead, held it up, I was across the road in the gutter. No good. Not going to work. So, um, so I went with this one. Um, I'll, flash up some, I'll flash up some pictures. Just while I'm raving on about it, um, yeah, we do have two monitors here. This one is reflecting what is happening on my laptop, which will actually be exactly what's happening on the house. Uh, but given that half the screen's going to be up on the wall, uh, you're not going to actually you're not going to actually um, see see the the proper things that I'm doing. So so basically, when we get down to the projection bit, uh, we'll be watching the TV. So this is my projection. Uh, this is my house from last year. I'm going to make you all listen to Frozen. I'm sure you'll love it. Okay. Let it go. All right, let it go. I'll come around here. So basically what I did is um, I've got a full house projection across the front there. I've got a video clip streaming up the top. Virtual Santa in the window. The light sequence, that's the next door neighbour, that's the next door neighbour, that's my mega tree. Um, so, so basically uh, my projector probably is up about here, there's a tree there and that's where my projector is. Um, out to the centre of that wall, I'd probably say 10 metres, 10 to, 10 to 12 metres is what that throw is on that projector. Not that many, 28, 3, something, yeah. It's a, it's a 720p, it's not a full HD. I'd probably go for a full HD next time if I wanted to get really into it. But um, that was landed in Australia for 700 bucks. Um, bought it Amazon out of the States. Um, so basically, if, if you were to go and stand up against the house and have a look at it, each pixel, I'm sure you're familiar with a pixel on a TV, very, very, very small. Up on my house, you stand beside it, you're looking at about 8 to 10 millimetre pixels on the house. So up close, terrible, far back, that's what you get. Okay? Now, I have cheated on this. I've, uh, I've played around with this video and I've actually put that in there so that you can see it properly. Uh, with the projector being over here, this film clip is a little bit light. So I have dubbed that over in this video clip for YouTube. But uh, out on the street, it's quite good. Um, all the rest of it is all, is all live projection. Okay? So that was just purely so that we could see what's, what's happening up there and, and sort of determine it. So basically on my computer screen, this is just a YouTube clip. This is what my projector is seeing down the bottom, and that is the, the master film clip up the top there. Anyone want to hear the end of the song? Trust you. All right. So, um, no PowerPoint presentation on this. So basically what I needed to do, as explained, my first issue was my house has got quite reasonably dark um, dark brick. 
Uh, I did project onto it. It was okay, but um, obviously a white surface is going to be a hell of a lot better. So um, I corroded my house. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I got four sheets of coro. Uh, this is this is pretty much complete. Um, in my display, there, there is another sheet of coro there, finished off. All my windows are coroed off around there. That window is actually a separate projector that's projected from the inside for Virtual Santa. He uses the full HD projector. He is extremely lifelike and extremely popular. So when he's in there, people think it's me. It's no joke. Yep, yeah, it's no joke. They think it's someone in there doing it. So um, I've usually got the, the candles up there, so they're not, they're not projected. Uh, I also project up there, so that's usually got Coro on it as well. So that is pretty much taken from where my projector box is, that photo. So that's the sort of angle that we're looking at. We're not square on. Um, so obviously with, uh, with what we call keystoning, um, if we were to build that on a square model type thing and project it on an angle, it's going to be distorted to all get out. Um, so we need, to sort of, we need to sort of get an impression of that that the projector sees and then we need to, um, we need to map our video to those items on the, uh, on the, um, on the actual house. <coughs> Use some very, very simple programs to do that process. I'll just flash up one more photo, which is that one. This is my house at night time, before the coro went on. You can see it's got all little red lines on it. There's my laptop, there's my table, there's my chair. I'm sitting in the front yard with the laptop and a mouse. And uh, I've got my, uh, got my house up. And I'm using MS Paint to draw lines onto the house. Um, and, and that's what I did. I drew, drew lines on the house. So I'm sitting there with the mouse. I'm not looking at my computer screen. You'll see me do it up there shortly. I'm drawing lines on the house. And that's how I got the outline. That's how I get the perspective of what the projector is actually seeing. Uh, Mrs. loved this bit. She, uh, we, we coloured the house all sorts of colours. We just filled it in with the old paint bucket, made it red, green, white, whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> white. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, I'd love to do it white. But yeah, no, I use the coro. So, so that's a that's a picture of my house as it is, as it stands. So uh, that was very early in the piece. I started this part of the project. I did my first projection last year. I started this part of the project probably. October the year before. So I worked on this for 14 months to get it to go. Um, so that was the, the start of my, um, my um, little project. Okay, so I've sort of half explained how I did it. So we can look up at the screen now. Now what I've done here is I'm just going to open up MS Paint. If I can spell it. I'm going to maximise that. Right yeah, and you can see what I've done. I've got a white area. Now our, our white, uh, our white um, if I take it up here, you can see the, the top of the, that border there. So this is our actual, this white area is, is the part that we can draw on. Um, so, so basically we want, we want this whole, uh, whole area, or the whole of the house to be lit up with that, that white area. Um, we don't want to see any of these borders up the top here. We don't want to see any of that on the house um, in, a, in, a, in a spot that's going to be projected on because we need to get rid of all that down the track. Um, so, so basically once we've found a location for our projector, um, as I touched on keystoning and stuff like that before, um, it doesn't matter what, how distorted that white area looks on your projector, uh, looks on your house, as long as you don't move that projector. Um, so basically I've moved this projector, it's not going to sit in a box out in my front yard for a year at a time, 10 months when I'm not using it. Um, I'll simply go in and redraw it. I'll, I'll plant this projector out in my front yard probably November and it'll sit there for a couple of weeks and I'll go out, redraw it and I won't move that projector 
and I'll, I'll just redo the, a part of the, the sequence and, and sort of remap it. So, um, like I said, this little 3D drawing here is a, uh, is a representation of my house off in the distance there. So I'm sitting in the front yard. Generally what I do is I grab my paint bucket, I'll go black, and I'll paint the world black. That's just so I can see what I'm drawing on it. It'll come up. I'll use a red line. So I'm just going to grab a line. So when you're out in the yard, you can actually see your cross going across the, the house. So you can see what I can see on the laptop. You've got no idea what you're doing. But on the house, you can see where you're going. Uh, what did I pick? Yeah, so I've got a red colour there. So I'm going to use red. I'm going to select this bottom corner of my house, draw a line up, bang, cross. I'll just go down to here. We won't be too technical. And over there. And I'm going to do that for any, any surface on the house that I want projected. Um, when I'm finished, I'm just going to fill that, that bit in so that I can see what it's covering. Here's one I prepared earlier. Hopefully I prepared earlier. I prepared it. Hopefully I saved it. Um, or not. Um, okay. Oh no, that's in Windows. Uh, oh no, 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 sorry, I'll go into Paint again. Sorry, it's a Paint file. If I go into Paint again, I'll go Open. I don't know what it's going to be called. There we go. Alright. So I've coloured in the parts of the house that I, I want to project to. Um, I, I should have coloured that in as well um, because I do actually project to those windows as well but you'll get the idea. So basically uh, any red part will be what we call a mask. Um, so when, when the projector, uh, what, what we'll be doing now is, is, is in the, the video software that I'll show you is we'll be, uh, we'll be getting that red colour. We'll be using a process called keying and we'll be getting rid of that colour so it's invisible. So anything behind that colour um, will, will come through, and black will always be black. Okay? Um, so you'll see in, in my video that I just flashed up there before, just as a little bit of fun, I've got some rocks around there. I actually free drew around those as well, and uh, whacked just some random colours on it just for fun, um, because it, it was in that white area that the, the projector could actually see. Um, so we've got our file there. Um, if I was to hit File Save um, and load it straight up to a video processor, um, it's only going to it's only going to save this black area as as the picture. Uh, whereas we're actually displaying this on our house with borders and program uh, files around the outside. So if I was to just save that, put it into a video editor, um, hit play it's not going to line up on the house because all this stuff is missing because that doesn't save in a picture. Okay, it's only going to save our template bit. So uh, what did I do? I did a print screen. Function, print screen, copies it to the clipboard, paste, and there it is. So, so now effectively we're saving, saving a, a picture of our screen as it was, not just a, um, so if I go file, and, and I've got that there already, so if I go file, save as, is it that one, yeah, so that's actually a picture, um, so that's not going to line up on there, you're probably better off looking at it on there, so you can see it as a picture, um, as a picture file we, we've got everything that is, was on our screen at the time we drew it. We've got our taskbar down the bottom. We've got our templates up the top. Um, so all we really need to do is uh, is get rid of 
those templates, taskbars, things like that, make them black, and, and we've got our full-size picture ready to go, pretty much. Um, the little piece of free software that I use is uh, paint.net. I find it's good. Uh, P-A-I-N-T dot net is that one. <coughs> We're going to open our file that we... Uh, That's not that one. That one. All right. So I've opened up our file in, in paint.net. Now, the reason I like this one is I can actually select an area with a, with a uh, over the left here, you'll have to look at the TV screen. Over on the left here, I've got a little lasso select. So basically, I can uh, select that lasso select. I can make a big uh, big lasso around a bit that I want to delete. I can go delete around here, get rid of all that rubbish, delete. Over here, get rid of all that rubbish, delete. And over to the side there, we've got a tiny little rubbish, go delete. Get my paint bucket, select a black colour, colour the whole thing in. So now I've just taken that photo or that screenshot got rid of all the rubbish out of it, made it black, file, save. That's the file that we're going to play with. <coughs> I think I called it final paste. Okay. So at the moment, I've just flashed that up onto the house again. Uh, if I make that full screen, somewhere, there, Bug it up doing something somewhere. I think I've got the wrong file. All right, I've moved something. But basically, once, once you've got that file in there and, you, and you've got it on full screen, um, it'll, it'll mirror your house unless something's moved between the time that I've done it. Um, so once I've got that file ready to go, I move into the uh, move into the actual uh, video mapping stage of, uh, of of what we need to do to actually make that into to what we saw as the end result. The one that I'm using is uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. <coughs> now, you may find it, you may buy it, whatever you do. Um, but basically, uh, there's, there's, uh, you could use any video editing software as long as, you've got these, uh, as long as you've got these layers there that you can put different film clips on, as long as you can do a couple of processes like colour keying, and the other one I use is corner pinning. Now, basically, corner pinning. The corner pinning is probably the most important one, which is why I chose Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, what corner pinning is, I'll just flash this photo of the house up again. No, that's, not, that's it. What corner pinning is, is, is basically when we get a video clip um, and we shoot it out of a, onto a TV, it's, it's square because the, the TV is actually square. Um, if, I wanted to shoot a, if I wanted to shoot a picture to that, that garage door, or even this one's probably a lot better, if I put a straight edge onto that, straight up and down, you can see that it's, it's not straight. So if I, if I, um, I, I need to, to make a... I need to distort an image so that when it is viewed on a house, when we're standing on the street, our pr perspective will be that it's all crooked in there, but it'll actually line up on the house. Um, so corner pinning is, is basically I'll grab that video clip and I'll pin one there, there, there and there. It'll look, it'll look all skew if on a, on a video when we play it on a TV, but when we put it into the projector and we've lined up that house, um, 
everything will be sweet. So corner pinning is, is, is a big one. And like I said, the other one is, uh, other one is color keying. So our, our color keying one is we get that red image and we, uh, we delete the red so that anything behind it uh, will be viewed. So we'll have a quick look at some of those things now. Uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. So what you're seeing here on the TV is basically um, I've got uh, this top layer that's purple at the moment. I'll delete that. Over over the side here in our uh, our project uh, side. These are these are just all the video files and and the picture. So the picture that we actually drew before. Um, these are just imported, um, so whatever your video program preference is, for me, I can just drag it into that box. So all my film clips, um, so you'll see that some of, the film, some of the stuff that you saw there was your snow background, your trees ripping through the forest there, you'll see that, um, and, and the main film clip. So, so they're just all on that project, uh, project box over to the side. And, and what we need to do is, um, you can see uh, the mask layer there. Um, I'll just drag that house back over onto it, because it'll still have the red bits on it now that I've deleted it. Oh, I wish I bought my glasses. Um, yeah, so so basically that's that photo that we uh, we edited in Paint.net. I've just brought it into that project line there, and um, not much use to us if we uh, we play the video file. It's on top. Um, we can't see anything behind it, so we've we've basically got to start to get our files and 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 move them. So over on the over in the uh, the actual. Uh, project side of it down the bottom here we've got several layers now layers work exactly as layers anything that's up the top will be at the top anything that's under it if something's over the top of it you won't see it okay so if it's a mask it's going to be at the very top because uh, all this red layer and I'll do that now uh, in this one it's a process called color keying um, I've got a color key tool over here I'm just going to drag it over onto the video itself. I've got a little eyedropper there. I'm going to pick my colour. I'm going to get rid of it. So all that red, I've just, uh, I've just got rid of it. So now what you can see, it's a bit annoying. So basically you can see what I've started to do already if I uh, just turn that layer off. You can see that I've got I've got the big main frozen clip down the bottom. I've also got another one up here, which is actually pinned. Um, that will need to go above there because it'll be a layer on top of the the masking layer. Did I just delete that? I did Control Z. Um, I'll need that one. I've got to add a layer. Let's put that there. Put that there. And I'll put that there. All right. Okay. I'm just going to turn some layers on and off. Um, so, so basically you can see that my main track there, if I just toggle the mask on and off, um, you can see where it's sitting on my house. Um, so basically it, it doesn't matter that I've cut that off of, of top of it, there's, there's my roof peak there. Um, so it's all fitting within it. So this is just all the background video that's associated. So you can see that there's a couple of presents spinning around and things like that. Um, and when we get rid of that mask, you can see how I've done it there. I've got one big large one there and one large one there and 
that's probably the pillar in my house that's black. Okay, um, so none of, none of these are actually lining up with this thing, obviously, because this is designed off my house at home, but um, you can get the idea of it. Um, like I said, this video seven line up here is our main film clip that appears up on the top of my peak. Um, it's actually on top of the mask layer at the moment, so if I activate that one, you'll see it pops up there. And um, that's actually a, a, what's called the corner pin layer. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's on top of all the layers, so it'll always appear on top of everything. And um, if I go, can I remove the properties maybe? Oh no, let's do it like this. I'll delete the um, I'll delete the actual file. I'll go and find it again. Should have it here. That Disney frozen. I'll put that in there. All right. So you can see when I've imported that video file, it's going to overtake the whole house. In fact, if I uh, you can't even see the house. It's just just over the whole thing. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a demo on corner pinning. So at the moment in my, uh, my effects control, um, I need to use a tool in here called corner pin. So I'll just get the corner pin up. I'll drag it over onto the clip that I want, and I get this properties box called corner pin. You'll also see up in the corner here. So again, I'm going to use this in the video sequence and not out on the house. <coughs> So what I need to do is I need to find the corners of my house that I actually want that little clip to be in. I'll just sort of roughly put it in there. Make it look sort of straight. And that's done. So basically I've, 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 I've taken that big large video clip and I've put it exactly on the house where I needed to put it in a, in a corner pin. So. Um, I've lined it up a little bit funny there, but you can see as we go through the layers that are underneath it, uh, that are coming through the mask, um, that video clip is always on top, because it's the, the top layer. Um, some of the other uh, layers that I've got here that you won't see, oh yeah, I've put it over there, is this frozen funny moments in there. That usually, that usually shows up on this window here in the middle. It's just another little video clip that shows up. Um, so that's, that's basically the, the only tools that you need to, to sort, of, um, sort of have in any sort of video software um, to, to, to do a basic uh, uh, video projection. Um, like I said, uh, color keying was a, a good one for me because I understood what chroma keying was. Uh, chroma keying is green screen effects like you see the, the weatherman and all that use, they're standing in front of a green screen, they delete that green screen and they put a video onto it. Um, and, and that's how they, they get the backdrop. So it's the same sort of effect here. We're deleting that red and we're just looking at what's coming in behind it um, and therefore the, the rest of the display is black. So end result, if I've sort of half done this right and I can find the file, Might be that one, I think. I'll expand that. No, that's not it. Just okay. while so, uh, whilst you're doing that, have you looked at other software like other video projection tools and stuff like no. that? No. I mean, video, video, VPT, I, I actually did my proof of concept with that. Yeah. But as far as outputting it as a whole video, because all I do with this now in, um, in Adobe is export it, um, which I did during lunch and it took about 30 minutes to render it, so I'm not going to do it again, but uh, it took about 30 minutes to render it and, um, and then you can load it onto the Pi as a video file and spit it out. VPT is more live, can't sequence to it, 
Whereas if I if I get a VO file like this, I, I export it as an MP4 file. I can stick it in there. I, I actually um, I actually when I, my my process for my uh, my process for my display now is um, so I get the VO clip that I want to use first. Um, have that. Um, I'll rip an MP3 file off of that video clip so that I've got something to work with in my video in my uh, sequencing software um, and that, that, that way the, 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 uh, the sequencing soft or the sequence is, is always going to match up to the MP4 itself so yeah v, VPT isn't going to work with a light display unless you just have randomness in the background yeah so that's why I don't use VPT I did I did start with it um, virtually a projector in the in the house lighting up the fridge, things like that, just to just to learn about corner pinning and things like that. But as far as layering and all that goes, can't do it in VPT. So uh, VPT was a, a, a free download. You can get that. It's extremely crash worthy as well. I uh, crashed it a million times. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great to understand what... Uh, what, what you have to sort of understand, like I've showed you there now, where you're off on a 40 degree angle to the house. If you're, if, you're, if you're perfectly in front of that house and your projector is mounted in the middle of your driveway somewhere and everything's all nice and square as you see it, go for it. But uh, anything else, you're, you're going to need to do some sort of corner pinning. So basically, um, basically uh, you, can, you can get a white box uh, and, and visually look at it down on the floor there uh, and, and, and see three sides. Um, so they're going to be three diamonds as you look at it. Uh, you, can, you can have your projector up here, shoot it down onto that, and VPT, you can draw three boxes on it, um, three separate video clips, play those three separate clips on that, that, that box. Uh, if you Google VPT, you'll get hundreds of little things that people have done in their house lighten up their wall, um, fun to play with, lots of fun to play with, pretty hopeless to, to do anything with it. Sorry? Yeah. A lot of the projectors, you, you can, you can, well, you can, you can adjust the the keystone vertical and horizontal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't need that. Why would I even need it? Yeah. Yeah. You, you've got. It. I mean, my 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 house works. I mean. Um, In, in my particular house, because the, 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 the projector in my house, I'll, I'll have a photo of it there somewhere. I've got a photo of the box. So that's, that's the little, uh, little box that... That's my uh, projector box. Um, uh, yeah, so we just made that out of steel, big, big pole that sunk in the ground with concrete. Got four bolts down the bottom there so I can unbolt it, cover it with uh, bark, and it's all good through the year. A um, couple of padlocks down the bottom, by the way. <laughs> so uh, if you can get the bolts undone, great, but you've got to cut the padlocks off as well. Yeah, so this, this box gets installed. There's a big foxtail palm there, so um, it's, it's hidden in behind the trees quite nicely. Um, like I said, that's the left-hand side of my house, so that's sitting about here. Um, that's that's where it's shooting onto my house. So in reality, I've got a shadow going across part of my garage there. Uh, there's going to be a shadow there. All this is all pretty good. All that's all pretty good, but just those those ones there, because obviously I've got a, a 3D candle poking out from there too, which is casting a little shadow. So I don't worry too much about the shadows on there. Um, Eddie used to chip me all the time about having shadows and things like that. I said, well, I don't care. 
<laughs> I've done it. Don't care. Um, uh, getting back to multi-sync, I mean, if I really wanted to, I could have a camera here, a projector here, one over there, split the house in half, put the, put the projectors closer, higher resolution, brighter image, run those two projectors in sync, and do exactly the same as what I did. Um, I've got to have a third projector up the top there. I can get an ultra short throw projector that they use in schools. I'd probably cut a bit of my roof out and have that much of the projector hanging out. It'd project a hundred inch screen from six inches from the wall. So there's there's many many options that you can do for it. Yeah, I could I could, I could cut that out, make it a video screen, have the projector in the roof shining forwards. It'd be bright as. But uh, yeah, because because this side of my house does suffer. Obviously, because the further light travels, the, the less you can see it. Um, so it is a little bit dull over there, but um, it's, people don't care. Um, my other biggest problem, obviously, is I am running a light show. Um, I'm running a light show and I'm trying to project and the front yard is lit up like a Christmas tree. So I, I come across that as a bit of a problem as well. Um, Oh, that's that video file that I was looking for. <laughs> See if that still works. So there you go. Okay, so so I made that. I exported it. Um, again, I've loaded that into the Pi. I'm out the front with the Pi. I've just loaded it over the network, and um, and you can see the whole house is black. I've sort of buggered up a little bit there on that tune to sign. I didn't line up the corner pins properly on that when I've done it here, but um, usually I'd have that corner pin there, and um, that's the end result. So uh, if you, you go out the front and you move your projector around a little bit, it's, uh, it's, all, it's all over, <laughs> unless you can line it up again. But um, yeah, I've, I've, the, the, the box that I've actually got, um, the box that I've actually got, uh, that projector sits in it upside down, no, right way up, no, it sits right way up, and because a projector is designed to sit on a bench, generally, and point shoot up, so if I sit that like that inside of a projector box, it's over the roof. I can't even see a piece of it on my house. So, so my projector is on an angle like that inside that box, so that the roof of my projector box is, is quite big. Um, the, the bottom of the, uh, the actual image is probably there, so all the menu bar and all that's there. I've just got the side of my roof. My, my side of my roof gets cut off there. I don't project to it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But um, you, you want to try and get your projector as close as you can and, and get that whole that whole paint paint thing happening on there. See, if this was if this was my place now, I'd have that projector a hell of a lot closer, so that these white borders that are here at the moment was in here. So, so for me to do that, I'm, I'm moving that projector right in and I'd even move it a little bit, bit further closer again uh, because that, that's going to be that's going to be the distance. Uh, you know, like out in the field, out in the field that that distance there can be you know like 10% of your brightness gone. But um, no, there's, that's, that's, that's just what's called a a short throw projector, you can get ultra short throws as well. So an ultra short throw is, is more, so, more so what you see in a primary school or a high school, uh, it's sitting above a white board, it's a little knob hanging out the wall and it projects a hundred inch. Um, I, I, I don't know how you'd really set it up in someone's front yard but um, for me the short throw works. So uh, that's what I use. Um, What else have we got in here? That's about it. Oh, I'll show you that little video clip while we're going. Um, 
this is this is the this is the the Raspberry Pi when I got it going. Um, you can see this is a this is a view from my front yard. That's the actual projector box there. So what I'm doing in the Falcon Pi here, I'll just make that full screen. I'll start it again. Yeah, so you can see my projector up on the uh, up in the tree there, and and basically I'm I'm turning it on from inside the house using the Falcon Pi. You can see it's lit up. And now I'm starting the frozen sequence, and there it goes. Um, so that's 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 that projector there. Uh, there's a little what's called a a lot, a lot of these projectors have got what's called um, RS-232 serial port connectors on them. It's just a, a serial data port connector. It's, I won't lie to you, it's an absolute mongrel to work with. Anyone that's done any sort of serial work, it's a mongrel. Um, but, but pretty much there's, there's a, um, that's, a, that's a, a USB to serial port. So, so that sits in my projector box as well. Um, so USB into the Pi, serial port into the projector. Got all the codes set up for it. Got a sequence in there to run it, um, and that turns my projector on like that. Uh, that's all good. So that's uh, video projection. I know it was a uh, yeah very quick and dirty presentation, but um, to do to do a proper file once you get to once you get used to actually learning what what you've got to do with it, um, there's a couple of couple of weeks work in lining everything up. Doing your layers, uh, getting everything right. Um, I've got. Um, I'll just quickly flash up my other video projection one that I'll I'll be using. That I, I used as well. Um, basically, Frozen got flogged last year. Obviously, the other one I had was, um, and I quite like it. Yeah. Uh, the other one. And this isn't a live projection. This is actually just out of the Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, but it was Polar Express. Um, so that was the other one I did. Yeah, so that, that worked on the same concept. So once you've got your mask, throw it together, press the, press the export button. Half an hour later, you've got a file. Um, Another two hours later, you've got a very basic light sequence to go to it. I've cut my lighting down because uh, basically I, um, I had, to, had to cut a little bit of lighting out because it was just too bright. It was, it was fading out the, um, the projection. But um, yeah, uh, one thing I had to do to my house is I've got uh, RGB strip around the windows and things like that. Um, I, I had to I had to mask the sides of those, or uh, I stuck them in uh, aluminium U channel, so I had to sort of pull everything off frames, get aluminium U channel or a, a piece of coro around the inside of the the, the tube frames, um, just so that the the lights didn't bleed across the house. Um, I had the same problem in the front yard, but <coughs> Mrs. went out and bought from Kmart or Big W or whatever a couple of those light poles. 240 volt LEDs. You light up the whole street with them. It turns out, and of course I've turned them on. I've put them either side of the driveway. Turned them on, bang! Flooded me, flooded me projection out. Couldn't see a thing. It was bright as, so um, I had to had to fix that. Um, like concrete plastic around the back. Concrete is plastic. Um, cable ties. Pushed all the light forward. Nothing's going backwards. So. So not an easy task, but um, fun all the same. Yeah. So um, last year I started running Polar Express. Yeah. So in this one you can see that's a video, that's a video, and that's a video. There's three videos in that one. Um, so last year I, I did a bit of Polar Express, but um, it ended up I had to play Frozen every second song because it was. It was synced to the uh, snow machine. That was the other thing. Uh, when the chorus for the uh, when the first chorus for Frozen came on, that's when the snow machine came on. 
uh, and it went for the rest of the two minutes of the song, whatever. Um, so I had a lot of cranky little princesses out the front going, where's the snow? So I actually ran, um, oh yeah, I got sick of frozen. I probably ran that. Um, I'd run that, then I'd run just a little Minions Christmas video clip, um, same sort of thing. <coughs> Sorry? The witch? Snow Machine. Um, I used that little board that David made um, effectively works off those... Um, uh, we did it a couple of years ago. Um, works off those remote control RF power points that you buy from wherever. Um, so basically... Yeah, so basically the RF power point, you press button one, those ones come on. Um, David wrote a little... Uh, David made a little board up um, that... DMX channel, basically. So you turned channel one on, it turned PowerPoint one on. So that's all I did. Um, I just had the snow machine set up, ready to go. When it got power, it fired. <coughs> but apart from that, some of the snow machines you can buy are DMX. So you can actually plug them into DMX and run them as part of your sequence. Or um, you have, I started off with a remote control in my pocket. And I still had to do that. Uh, the, 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 the every, the, the, I'd go through 20 litres of snow a night like that. It was phenomenal. Um, yeah, yeah. The big one that I bought, I bought a 1500 watt one. Um, it's, it'll be raised up this year. I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't find with that many people that you could even hear it. So it, it wasn't really a problem. Um, the kids certainly don't care. They were, they were right under it. Um, the, my, uh, when, you, when you saw my laptop there, my mailbox is sort of in front of that in the garden. Um, so the, the, the snow machine was sort of in that, in that garden, shooting up into a, a, like I've got a bit of a paddock up in here. Yeah, and, and in front of that again in the in the garden was the uh, the stereo speakers. So anyone out on the road could hear it, but stereo drowned out. Mm. I found um. <coughs> I found um sort of three quarters of the way through December after I got really busy towards Christmas. Uh, the little speakers I had were no good. Um, I had to go in and get big speakers that I had in the shed type thing and, and hook them up to a different amplifier and really get into it. My neighbours all loved it, so they don't care. Uh, they're all out the front with me, sinking tubes and whatnot. So You're not always going to get away with that. No. But no, I'm I'm pretty lucky that our whole area is all over it. They're the ones that are blew up. Mm. Yep. Yep. They're they're basically the, the little cone outdoor ones. I um. I've got a few of those at home from projects and whatnot, but I, I, I killed them after a while. I had to go to full-size home theatres. Or, um, actually, the next-door neighbour, we use them this year, and I'll be keeping an eye out for them. Um, Aldi did a PA stand one, about 100 bucks. Two, two PA speakers with a, just a line-in and Bluetooth and all the rest. Um, I wouldn't use it professionally, but... Um, Geez, it cranked out, so, and it had an FM tuner in it too. So I'm running FM. All he had to do was plug them in, come to the rescue, because I, I did. I killed speakers. I um, killed speakers and I had to, had to use those, and it turned out they were pretty good. So if they ever come up again, I'll go and buy them, because uh, for what they're worth, I mean, you buy proper PA speakers, they're six, $700 
for a lot of people, especially who have good neighbors. Yeah. It's not blame for not to be able to get out of the way. I wasn't on it. I didn't have any speakers. It was purely from the people on the street okay. with their past areas and stuff. Mm. No, it's funny actually because these clips have been on YouTube for 12 months and they actually added the title to it. <laughs> no, I don't care, Len. Couldn't give a rat. If I if I owned the takeaway shop down the road and I was doing this on the front of the takeaway shop, it'd be classed as business advertising, and 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 you get you'd get stabbed like you wouldn't believe. Yep. All right. All good. I'll leave you alone.